Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 14 of Photoshop for Photographers. In this episode, we're going to create a tilt-shift effect. Now, most of you have probably heard of tilt-shift lenses. They're often used by architectural photographers to correct for any geometric distortions that are created by a typical lens. A tilt-shift lens has adjustments right on the lens that will help you keep the verticals vertical, the horizontals horizontal, and make sure that buildings aren't falling backwards off the screen. Now, um, portrait photographers also like to use tilt-shift lenses to get a tilt-shift effect uh, to get more emphasis on their model. One portrait photographer, my favorite portrait photographer, is Gregory Heisler, and he has a book out called 50 Portraits, and in it he talks a lot about the tilt-shift effect and how he uses it. Now to create his effect he uses medium format and large format cameras and they have adjustments on them where you could create kind of this tilt shift look. Now landscape photographers also like the tilt shift effect because it makes their expansive landscape look like a miniature model that was created with a macro lens and we're going to do that today with this image here of Buffalo, New York. This isn't far from where I live. So what we're going to do first is I like to fill the work area with the image. So I'm going to hit Command-0. Now if you have a PC, of course you will hit Control-0. I like to duplicate the background before I do any work, so I'm going to hit Command-J. You hit Control-J with a PC. We're going to immediately add the effect by going up to Filter, Blur Gallery, Tilt Shift. And you could see it immediately applies the filter horizontally. And you could see the, uh, to the right here are the adjustments for the filter. But before we get into that, let me explain what all these lines mean. You could see in the center, equidistant from each other, are these two solid lines. Between those two solid lines, the image is in perfect focus. The blur effect is not being applied. Going out from that, uh, from each of those lines, it goes out to a dashed line. In between the solid line and the dashed line is the transition zone. So near the solid line it's still in perfect focus but as you go towards the dashed line it starts becoming more blurred until it's at its maximum blur at the dashed line. Beyond the dashed line to the outside of the frame it's just the maximum blur that you dialed in. Now I mentioned dialed in and you could do that a couple different ways. There is a slider over here which you could just move to increase or decrease the blur of the image or you could go right here you could see there's this circle and you could just kind of grab onto it and spin it around like that. Now the other thing you could do is you could move these lines so you could increase or decrease the area that's in focus by just hovering over a line you could see it turns into that double arrow and we could increase it by pushing it up or decrease it by pushing it down and the transition zone you could also affect those by moving the lines up and down also we could rotate them in this specific image I would prefer that the in focus area be going diagonally through the frame. So to rotate, you can see there's this dot right here. You could hover around that dot and you could see the cursor turns into this semicircled arrow. And we could spin by just kind of moving it like to the left. I could make this uh, whole area go diagonally. You also could go below the solid line towards the outside of the frame and just click down and you could see that that turns into that semicircle arrow and we could spin the whole effect and make it the way we want. Now I have it going diagonally the way I want. I'd like to increase the in focus area so I'm going to go on top of the solid line right here and I'm going to move it up because I would prefer that these trees are uh, be in focus. Also, I'm going to increase it on the lower side, too, by just uh, clicking down. Now, I like the transition zone, so I'm going to leave those alone. Now, we're going to adjust the blur, and I'm going to just get a little less blur, maybe. Maybe right around there, 29 pixels of blur. The distortion, 
I usually leave right at zero percent. You could try it. It it doesn't you know hurt. I I tell you the truth. Don't see much of a change uh, with the amount of blur that I use. I don't see amount of a change. Mount. I don't see much of a change when I move the distortion slider. So you could try it. See what you could do. You could also click this tick box for symmetric distortion, so it's not as randomized. But as I mentioned, I usually just leave mine right around zero and don't even touch that slider. Now, below that, towards the bottom, we have blur effects. This image isn't conducive to any blur effects. An image that would be a nice uh, uh, subject for blur effects would be maybe an evening or a night image where you have lights in the background. Think maybe of a scene that has an outdoor Christmas tree with lights on it. What you would do is you would turn up this light bokeh slider and you could see even in this image I'm starting to get this kind of uh, bokeh effect of light you could change the color with this slider here and you could change the light range by moving these two little triangles here so moving this one to the left increases the tones that will be affected by these two sliders and we could even get a narrow range by putting them closer together. Now, as I mentioned, uh, this image is not conducive to a bokeh blur effect. So I'm going to leave those down. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to click on this checkbox to turn that right off. Now, I am done as far as I'm concerned. I like the angle I have. I like the in-focus area. I like the transition zones. I like the amount of blur and the distortion. Uh, so I'm done. I'm going to click OK. And you can see it immediately brings it back into the, the uh, regular Photoshop. And I, because I duplicated that layer, it applied it to layer 1. I'm going to turn it off and turn it on. And hopefully in the video you could see how it kind of gives this like model effect to the shot. As though it's more of a model that's on someone's desk. <laughs> it's not really a scene that's uh, very expansive. Now. As you can see, I added the effect to it, and I cannot go back to readjust anything. So what I would recommend is that you create a smart object before you do this. So I'm going to do that uh, just so I could show you how to do it. So I'm going to delete this layer by simply hitting the Delete key. I'm going to duplicate the background layer again by hitting Command-J. Again, if you have a PC, it's Control-J. I'm going to right-click on that layer, and I'm going to... Uh, convert to smart object right there. It just takes a second. And when it's converted, you're going to see that it will just look pretty much the same. It's just going to have this little box right here in the corner. All right, so we converted it to a smart object. Now we're just going to go to Filter, Blur Gallery, Tilt Shift. And again, I'm going to rotate it. And I'm going to increase the in focus area slightly and I'm going to leave the transition zones alone I'm going to increase the blur to around 25 to 30 pixels I'm going to leave the distortion alone and I'm not going to do anything with blur effects and I'm going to click OK now it takes a little longer to apply it this time but you could see what it did because we had a smart object we have a mask, so I could go on the mask if I wanted to, and I could get a, bl a brush and paint in black. So you set black as your foreground color. And if I wanted to, I could increase, well, first I'd increase the brush size just for effect. And paint in black, I could remove the effect, as you could see, because I painted in black. Uh, so I remove the effect from that area right there. But I really don't want to do that, so I'm going to back out of that. But the real advantage of using the Smart Object is I could just double click on where it says Blur Gallery, and it will bring me right back into the Tilt Shift um, a tool, and I could change things. So I could you know, widen my zones a little bit or narrow them. I could change the amount of blur, anything like that. I could adjust it. I could readjust it, I guess, and then click OK. And it will bring those changes back into Photoshop. So that's how you would apply 
the tilt shift effect to a landscape image. I encourage you to experiment with it and I also encourage you to create a smart object before you apply the effect. That way you have a mask, you could mask out areas that you want masked out and you could double click on where it says the blur gallery and you could go and readjust everything. Alright, so that's it. I'd like to thank everyone that watches my videos and thank everyone that buys my Lightroom presets from my website and my Photoshop actions. I really am grateful for your kind support. It allows me to do all these free videos. So thank you very much and I'll talk to you guys soon.